Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. To identify the message, I just say, it is the fourth message we give to this group. in this meeting series in Ottawa in front of light workers who have experienced things perhaps they didn't expect perhaps some of those things were realizations that there's a bigger picture a much bigger picture every small realization discovery adds to a greater picture of discovery and eventually we get something we have spoken about before which is the spark we define the spark as a full realization of enlightenment explosion that wipes away everything that you've ever taught and lets you analyze what is instead of what you were told should be and that's what always goes on in a place like this with free choice each individual living their life finds themselves again with free choice to learn or not, to see or not, to feel or not. And dear one, it's always honored. There are those who have asked in the past about this. And they've said, well, crying if you see someone who has decided to embrace that which is a lower energy. Do you feel that perhaps they're wrong? Do you know what unconditional love is? There are, un, there, there are no conditions to be loved. There are none. And if a human being wishes to embrace that, which is a low energy, and perhaps does things that you may say, well, they shouldn't have done that. Unconditional love will not judge them on the choice that's free. That's the beauty of the love of God. We talk about invisible things. We talk about some of the things that are more invisible than others. Well, there is one that is very visible. And that's how much you're loved. I want you to have a revelation today of what benevolence might really be as you sit there. I wish it were possible to turn on the lights as they say and every one of you could see the magnificence of your soul. But this is a test of consciousness on the planet, not a test of the human being. It's a test, it's a test of, of a collective consciousness and where it will go over time. Let me tell you, you're winning this test. If there has to be a winning and a losing, from our standpoint, a higher vibration means that you're passing a test. And this planet was not going in that direction, dear ones, until the late 80s. In fact, you were going in just the opposite way. It's not unusual for this to happen and some of you will roll your eyes again when I say you're not the first planet to have this happen the one that seeded you the group of three who seeded you had this happen and they're coming to grips with energy and their 2012 as you might say their 2012 happened in the same way in that it was not expected 
they even had mass genocide. It was even greater than your final solution. Can you believe something like that? And yet they pulled themselves up. We speak of those from the stars who are responsible for giving you your 23 chromosomes when all those below you have 24. You are not from here, dear ones, not really. Not really. All of that is part of a love scenario, a plan to take souls which are the core and the heart of the Creator and spreads them upon the planet by agreement. Did you understand that? Every single one of you stood in line, so to speak, to be here. Question was asked earlier, rhetorically, would you come back? If you had a choice right now as a human, would you come back? Most light workers listening to this say, no, I've done my part. And I've said this before to you, old soul, although you have free choice totally, especially on the other side of the veil to come back or not, you're going to be so excited to return. This human condition you're in right now may not agree with that. Let me tell you, when you have the consciousness of God, you realize what you have done and what's coming, and what's coming, and what's coming. You wouldn't miss the party. Coming back to the planet after lifetime after lifetime slogging through dark energy, you have now the chance to come in a newer energy that is not near as dark that is awakening like a flower that opens and you're going to want to be there for there's so much that's going to start writing itself if you want to call it that or going into a higher vibration if you want to call it that the sun is coming out when it comes to the consciousness of humanity it is indeed a new dawn these things happen not only slowly, but more difficult when you still are battling old energy. And you are. These things will not happen instantly, but the old soul has so much light. And the influence of your presence on the planet is enormous, and you don't even know that. Some of you say, well, all I do is go to work and I come to the, the conventions and I read and, and, and I, I have coherent moments where I, I am in, in a way feeling the love of God. What, but that's all I do. No, it isn't. If you were a ship in the ocean... and your compass was out and you were approaching shore and you saw a teeny light in the distance and you realized it was the lighthouse a lighthouse that was guiding you into the bay not on the rocks and as you passed the lighthouse you realized it was small but oh what a light it had and then you realize that there were all manner of ships around you that had seen that light were steering themselves into the safety of the shore. I said it again, dear ones, you never met the one in the lighthouse. You didn't even know their name. But all they did was sit there for years and show the light. This is that which is a metaphor of the old soul. You're unaware of what your presence does around you. You're unaware of those you'll never meet who see your light. 
You're unaware of your magnificence in the eyes of God. But the awareness is starting to reveal itself not as a self-importance, dear ones, but of a wise old soul who starts to understand what they're doing, why they're here, and smile because of what they are creating around them. There are those who will never know you who are affected by you. The coherence that you create together as old souls thinking alike with benevolent thoughts to those around you who need them, with prayers and benevolent thoughts to, to your government, all of that makes a huge difference and you don't know it. Because that which is the consciousness of the old soul has dramatic, wise energy that broadcasts itself. That's why the town will change. And I speak of all the towns, of all those who would listen, who have similar groups of old souls who will return and continue. The love of God is bigger than you have any idea of. I cannot express without words how big it is. And it's not that it's about the enormity of it. It's about the purity and the amount of depth that it has. Could you even sit and be saturated with the love of God? The love of the Creator. Not definable in your words, not definable as any of the energy that you've ever seen. I can only tell you stories or metaphors. Or give you an idea, even as you would give to your children, of the enormity of something. Comparing perhaps a, a ping pong ball to the sun. <laughs> and even then the child won't understand because the child doesn't know how big the sun is. Not really. All they see is the ping pong ball. So I give you this. Love is universal. Every single human being knows what it is. And there are so many aspects to it. And it's beautiful. And as a human being, you do your best to emulate that which is good. But especially when it comes to love. When you love another person, another human being, and you really do, and you're really in love, no matter what they do, no matter what their faults are, no matter how long you're with them, you still look at them with the same eyes. And you love that which is their soul. And you smile when you think of their name, and you miss them when they're gone. And it's beautiful. When you have the love that is for an animal and they come to you as small as perhaps a hamster as large as a horse or an elephant, it's the same and they feel it and you feel it. And there are so many stories. Of the man or the woman and their, and their horse. And when they, when they go into the circle and the horse trots over so happy to see them rubbing against them. It's a love affair. It doesn't matter how big or how small. It's a love affair. The animal, the animal knows it and feels it and returns it. It's unconditional to you. The mother who has the baby, even in her womb, saying, I'm going to do everything for you. 
my child, that I possibly can do. I'm going to love you beyond love. I'm going to do everything even beyond that what was given to me. I'm going to make your world special. And then when the infant emerges and you, you look at them eyeball to eyeball, mom, for the first time, and your heart just opens and you weep with joy. Now, I just gave you the goodness of love, the best there is that humans can express. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's absolutely true. Another metaphor. What is the best thing you can do? I'm going to ask you. I want you to compare it with what God can do. God creates universes. What are you doing? And I say this because I will say the best you can do with love, that's the difference. God can create universes of love. How about you? And that is why so many times when we see those who try to humanize God and we say, you have no idea what you're doing. No, really. You trivialize, trivialize the very essence of the creation of the universe when you say there's a war in heaven. Oh, how human of you. So take that enormity of love that I've just given you, and I want you to pull it in, if you can, to where you sit in the chair, whether you're listening to this someplace or whether you're sitting physically in front of me. And what I say to you, that is the truth. God loves your magnificence because in your soul is a part of it. That's the light in you. And there's nothing you can ever do to diminish that in the eyes of God. Nothing. How does that feel? To know that your magnificence is seen by the creator of the universe in such a pure way that you can never diminish it. Now I want you to go from this place and stop judging yourself or asking the question, am I pleasing God? Never ask that question. Never ask the question, am I doing it right? If you will receive that which is the love and not judge that or put qualifiers on it or ask about it and just sit and let it pour in, that is what we're asking. Just sit and let it pour in. All of that which is asking the questions is human nature because you ask yourself that about yourselves growing up with your peers your parents at work there's always the comparisons that go on there's always the questions am I doing it right or wrong and how am I seen don't you dare take that scenario and push it at God because it doesn't work this way Instead, I want you to know there's never judgment. No matter which direction you take it with your free choice, you are loved beyond measure. And you can feel it because it warms where you sit. In your quietest moment tonight, alone, by yourself, I want to ask you to do something. If you have to climb into a closet and be alone, then do that. I want you to shut your eyes and stand there and raise your arms and say, thank you, God, for loving me more than anything. I accept this love. And those words are your affirmation and consent that you know the truth. And you will get chills. And you will have that which pours into you that says it's about time. 
you let us in. It's about time you let us in. All the teaching of the two days has been about that. That's the bottom line. If you want to say there has to be one. Because all things emanate from then on. And your life starts to open up. The spark occurs. And there's a revelation of love. I am cryon in love with humanity for good reason. My messages will always be the one I just gave. And so it is.